Hi, I would like to show you in this new video how I created these comic balloons. So let's start. The first thing I would like to show you is how I created this container, the blue one. So I'm going to isolate it in a new canvas by command copy it. Now I'm going to create a new canvas out of it. So as I just explained in several previous tutorials of mine, um, to be able to do what I just did, you come here and say new from clipboard. That means that you first have to copy it. It stays on your clipboard and then you either come here and click here or click this shortcut and it's going to create and isolate a new canvas with the object you just copied. Okay, so and let's go with the stroke, which is the interested, interesting part in here. As you can see, it has different widths in each side. And this is because in the stroke panel, you have this option called pressure. So what I did uh, by default, it's something like this. So you see all the widths are the same, but what I did is just give it different width by dragging here, let's say something like this. And what you have in here is something more cartoony. You can try different effects, I mean, by moving different sides to it, see how it changes, just select the points you you want and give it the look you're looking for. The next thing we're going to see is this half tone. I'm going to copy it, pass it to my new canvas. So this is a half tone that you can either create yourself or much easier. You can come to places like Vectisi. There's lots of them you can just choose and download for your projects. I choose this one for this example instead of creating it myself because it was faster. Uh, if I don't find any that uh, su suits my needs, obviously I'm going to have to create it by hand. But for this exercise, I thought this was quite nice. So I copy pasted it. I downloaded it first, obviously, and placed it in my canvas. So that will be for the half tone. Now we're going to see how I created, because we're going to be focusing mainly in this uh, example here. I created different ones, but uh, I'm going to more or less explain uh, the boom one. <laughs> so and this is a um, comic balloon, a typical roundy comic balloon. So how I created this, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it here. OK, so for this, basically what I did is I'm going to show you here, I'm going to make it smaller so I have more room to work. And I basically selected the ellipse tool, went like this, and then for this little add-on, <laughs> call it whatever, I created it by hand. So I pick the brush tool and I go something like this. Now I can, don't you worry if it doesn't really um, look as it should because it's very easy to amend as you can see in here now i just pull my notes and i have something like this so affinity designer recently added this field here called stabilizer which is in the contextual menu for the i think it's the pen tool no not for the pen tool sorry for the pencil tool and the brush tool so what this does is basically um it helps you to trace your strokes in in a way that they are more stabilized as it says and uh, this means that even though i'm working with a mouse and not with a digital pen my strokes are going to be controlled and it's much easier to get your segments in such a way that they look smoother and not too clumsy so it's it's a great tool um i'd say i really like it so as i was saying i have this um little corner in here and now what i want to do is of course because this is transpassing the it's overlapping the the balloon behind what i'm going to do is select both of them i'm going to come to geometry uh, it's as of today this is for what i know called operations in the windows version it's a little bit inconsistent but uh, i think they're going to fix it now so i come here to geometry the bo boolean operations and i click on add i remind you that you have to have both of them selected and now it's just one single shape okay i really like this one much better than this one now i'm going to um, probably 
I'm interested in giving it a little bit more of a style, which I didn't do here. I'm going to get rid of this one. And as I said before, I come here, I come to pressure. Ah, another one thing, please have this checked if you're going, to, if you're planning to scale your object, because otherwise it's not going to scale in a nice way. Okay. So what I'm going to do is the same I did for this rectangle. I'm going to give it a little bit of a different width so it looks more cartoony. I'm going to move it a bit so you can see. So I come here, select this one, and I'm going to move this and play also with the width. And now you can see it looks quite nicer and more cartoony as we need it. Okay. Now I'm going to make it a bit bigger something like that and the next thing we're going to be seeing is the text so for the text what i did is i selected my cartoony font i had in my system this one is called cooper std you can go to google and say cartoony font you're gonna find thousands of them um it can be this or any other one you like it doesn't really matter as long as it fits uh, the cartoon style so what I found here is I'm going to isolate it too. I'm going to place it here so you can see it better. I'm going to toggle this and I'm going to show you what I've done. Okay, the first thing, I'm going to switch off this layer. I have an outline. So basically what it would be is I'm going to boom, I'm going to make it with a exclamation mark so it looks more like a cartoon thing. Boom, and now I go Cooper STD. Okay, this is my first move. I'm gonna give it an angle, something like this. And now, because I don't want, I don't need the fill, I'm gonna remove the fill and give it a stroke. Something thicker, something like this. And as you can see, I have now the same I have in here. Okay, so I'm gonna make visible the background and gonna get rid of the stroke I just created to let you see the style for this one. I'm gonna copy and paste this one here. Okay. And I'm gonna give it a white stroke. As you can see, um, we have a white stroke with this uh, 7.5 points and a fill, a gradient. Okay. So I'm gonna pick my gradient tool, I'm going to go, oh, sorry, I'm going to select it first, obviously, and I'm going to select again the gradient tool, and I'm going to go something like this, I'm going to make it, yeah, well, I'm going to follow the example. Okay, now I'm going to change the colors for the gradient, so let's choose something like yellowish in here, and for this other one, I'm going to give it some orangey. It's a pity that everything gets in my way because I'm working with a small screen. But anyway, um, so we have our gradient here. Okay, I'm going to modify it a little bit. Um, I think I like it better in here because it's more yellow. So I'm going to change again the color for this one to something more yellow, more like this. Okay, and as I said, the gray, opa the gradient, um, the stroke has to be white. So and this is what I'm doing now. Now we have this in here. Of obviously it has to be the same with uh, the same size, same points, the font as the stroke we created before. I'm going to place the stroke before it, something like this. Okay, so it looks like this one here. Don't you worry if they don't fit uh, exactly because that's exactly what we need for to create a comic um, look has to be a little bit offset. Okay, so that's perfect. Something like this. I give it an offset like this. And now I select my text like that. And what else? What I want? Yeah, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Just slightly bigger. Okay, and now I select both of them and make them both of them bigger. And what I'm missing now, I'm going to get rid of this. Sorry, I'm going to get rid of this one. So you see it better. I'm going to create this shadow in here. So I come to effects 
okay i repeat as i always do if you don't have this panel here you come up view studio and you're going to find here all the main panels for affinity designer so in this case it would be effects okay you click in here and you you get it so i come to effects and i'm going to say i want an outer shadow okay now i need to offset it a little bit i'm going to give it a hundred percent opacity and i'm going to make the radius bigger and more in here and i'm going to give it a different angle so it looks more like offset and again uh, no because it looks i don't want the radius i'm gonna get rid of the radius because it looks a little bit blurry so this would be basically it okay now we have this i come back to layers i switch on my stroke that goes on top of it and we are missing the half tone okay i can get rid or just move this here I'm going to select the whole text. I'm going to group it. I'm going to move it here. Now, what I want to do is to insert with a mask, with a clipping mask, this uh, effect here. For that, what did I do? Well, I can select this, for example. I copy it. Command copy, control copy in, in Windows. I paste it. Now, you see I have it here. I'm going to place it on top of the layers. I'm going to make it smaller. I click Shift. No, sorry. I click Alt. So it just um scales proportionally i'm gonna make it because it was here well i'm gonna go back so you see it it was a 30 uh, 30 percent opacity if i click zero in my keyboard it goes to a hundred okay now i have it there i'm gonna give it a color something like something like this for example maybe more yellow something like this now i have it here and what i need to do is insert this half tone inside this text the one in the background. So, so out of all the ways we have to clip mask elements, as we saw in other tutorials I did before, I'm going to choose the one that I find more straightforward, which is I want to clip mask this half tone inside this text. This text, as you can see, is the container. OK, so I click it on the layers panel I come down here, you see this blue line in here, not to get um, confused with this other, op Oopa. This other option, which, which is uh, masking, okay? What I want to do is a clipping. So I let go like this, okay? And now you see that I can move it around inside the text, okay? So now we have this element inside this element. That's a clipping mask, OK? So there we go. We have it more or less like that. You can just adjust it as you want, OK? Something like this. I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to go back to my original. And well, the next thing would be, yeah, I'm going to create all these halftone pattern effects so it looks more interesting so that would be copy pasting them make them smaller give them different color something like that give them a bigger opacity something like this which is not enough so i'm gonna okay so that would be it now i'm gonna place it i'm gonna toggle all this and i'm gonna place it right on top of this something like this and now I copy paste again give it another color I don't know something like this I'm gonna make it slightly yeah and also this one less less transparency to it yeah something like this let's check the original well a little bit smaller I'd say now this is something you go controlling as you work and you give it you know you compose your image as you best think it could be and now we're going to, cre to create these stars in here okay so for that we saw before what to do this is basically a primitive shape of those you find in here several options i selected the star tool okay i'm gonna go to my example and we start from scratch in there so we select the star tool we click shift so you drag and it's proportionate okay so now we need to change the 
the fill and stroke to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is white for the fill on the stroke. I'm going to make it, I'm going to leave it at uh, 16 points and I'm going to give it some pressure. I'm going to move first of all this so you see it. So we go to pressure and now I'm going to do exactly the same I did for the balloon and the container, something like this. Mm. Yep. Well, that's too extreme. I don't like it. Yeah, something like this. Now I give it a bit of an angle and good to go. Make it slightly smaller. Copy paste it, place it around my graphic, something like this, maybe a bit bigger here. You know, this is up to you. Give it another angle to give it some rhythm, different size, oppa, different sizes. Okay. Mm, yeah, something like this. Okay, so next thing and last, I'd say, let's create these nice um, lines in here, which give a bit of a rhythm. And again, it's the same thing. So this is a segment, as you can see here, that I trace with my pencil tool. Let's come here, um, select the, pen, the pencil tool, and I'm gonna, woo, with the stabilizer, it's gonna be very easy to create this kind of uh, nice lines, okay? If you don't have any, um, what am I doing here? If you don't have any uh, pressure selected, uh, we go to reset. So you can see here now, if I trace with the pencil tool, whoop, it's just a line that has the same width everywhere. So again, we come here and we go like, oh, and up with this or like this or like that. And you can just move it around as you want. And you know, you have it quite easy. We've done this several times in this um, exercise. So just practice till you get your nice results. Okay, this went a little bit crazy. <laughs> this is not what I wanted, but it's more to show you how to create this kind of uh, effect. Okay, so basically this is it. This is all the mystery on creating nice comic balloons with text. Uh, please, if you have any doubts, ask me, like, subscribe, comment and see you in the next tutorial. Sorry, I've been a little bit too late to upload the um, last video, but you know, pff, I'm busy. <laughs> so I'm doing it the best I can. Okay, kisses and see you soon. Bye.